Hello and welcome back to the Coding Hub. In today's video we will look at how you can set up your Chromebook for offline use. More and more people these days are using, the, uh, using and buying Chromebooks. So in this video we will have a look at how you can make sure that you can carry on using your Chromebook for offline use. Uh, but before we get started, please like and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. We, we do videos every week about coding and other tech related topics. Okay, let's get started. So Chromebooks, they are in recent times, they've become very, very popular and uh, some people are still hesitant to get one just because they think that it's an online only device. However, Chromebooks actually work great offline as well. And we will see how you can use some of your most common tasks and how you can do carry on using them offline. So the first one that we'll look at is mail. Uh, and as with anything in Chrome OS, you can actually achieve most things in three different ways. And we will have a look at all three of those different ways. So the first way that you can access your mail offline is via the browser itself. So what you can actually do is go to your Gmail uh, go to settings and there's an offline tab and in this offline tab you can actually enable offline mail now what this does is once you've installed the gmail application uh, the, the gmail extension to your chromebook it then syncs uh, some of those uh, emails to your computer depending on your settings uh, by default it syncs the last 30 days worth of emails and uh, that will look and feel and behave exactly the same as how uh, Gmail would on your browser. Now you can achieve this with other mail providers, however um, offline support may or may not be there depending on what mail provider you use. Uh, stuff like Outlook uh, works, however Gmail is not, um, uh, Gmail works as well, however other ones uh, you will have to check for yourself. Now what I normally prefer doing is actually downloading Android specific applications from the Google Play Store. So you can actually use Android on your Chromebook. So here I've actually got the Gmail app uh, installed onto my Chromebook and uh, I can view and send emails directly from here just as I would on um, my phone or my tablet and it works and behaves exactly the same um, it's got great support for chrome os and um, uh, and for landscape large screens you can you know you can uh, resize and make this bigger and smaller as you wish um, so it works great um, and moving on to calendar uh, personally again i actually use the the calendar android application just because it, it works really great and it's uh, again got great Chrome OS support and uh, yeah it's uh, it's it's really really good however um, as with Gmail you can actually go on your Google Calendar and turn on offline calendar which again will do exactly the same as for your Gmail and again this, this is specific to Google however if you use other mail uh, and calendar providers, you would have to check on those specifically whether they have offline support on their browser. However, if you use um, a mail or calendar application from uh, the Google Play Store, then it, it chances, uh, uh, well, you, you can just connect them to any mail provider, whatever that is, whether it's Outlook, Yahoo, or Gmail, or whatever. Uh, and you can, uh, there's, there's more than just one mail provider, so it's not just Gmail and uh, Gcalendar. Uh, you can you can download any Android application from the Google Play Store that you prefer using, and link that up to whatever email and calendar provider you prefer using. Now there is a third option for both mail and calendar, and that is Linux. So Chromebooks support. Uh, Linux applications and you can install uh, any Debian uh, Linux application onto your computer and there are a lot of mail and calendar uh, providers for Linux out there so if you enjoy using those you, you can use them here as well typically speaking email uh, and calendar uh, are both handled in a single answers are you just need to download the one uh, application to handle both mail and calendar now moving on to documents uh, where the situation is slightly different for Chrome OS and the reason for that is uh, you actually have 
in your files um, in your files uh, explorer you actually have Google Drive directly built into the operating system and inside your file browser so um, what you can actually do is uh, when you click on any folder or file you can actually enable offline use by just checking this box and that will add a little check next to the folder saying it's available for offline and as you can see here some of my other folders uh, I've already had set up for offline use just because I use them offline myself now the only annoying thing with this is that you can't actually do file new directly from the file browser so you can't create a new Google Doc file or sheets or slides directly from the file explorer which is a little bit annoying hopefully they will change that in the future however if you do want to do that you can actually go inside um, inside the Google Drive extension on your uh, on your Chromebook and you can just do new uh, and uh, do Google, uh, Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Slides. Uh, however, if, you, if there was a file in here and I was to double click it that, uh, and I was offline, that will directly open it in Google Docs and just edit it that way. So it, it, it will still, you can still edit files that are already here, you just can't create new ones, which is a little bit annoying. Um, but you can still create new ones directly from the Google Drive um, extension. And if you want to edit any other files that aren't Google uh, Docs or Sheets or Slides, and for example, you're a Microsoft Office user, you can just download uh, something like WPS Office or Microsoft Office themselves and um, think, or anything from the Google Play Store. And you also have the option to install Linux applications. So things like uh, LibreOffice is uh, available on Chrome OS so you can install that onto your Chromebook as well. So you have a lot of different options if depending on what type of files you want to edit. I'm personally a Google Drive user and you can actually edit Microsoft Office files in Google Drive. So um, yeah, that, that particular integration works really, really well. Uh, moving on to video editing, uh, which I think is actually the weakest point on Chrome OS's offline usage. So there are some video editors that you can use in your browser, uh, which work great. However, they don't have offline modes. Uh, so for this particular section, I would recommend using Android applications. Um, Linux again, there's very limited kind of video editing software out there. However, if if there is one that you like using, it sh as long as it has Debian support, it will work on a Chromebook. Uh, however, for my personal usage and what I actually use myself to edit this is KindMaster. KindMaster is great. Uh, so whilst there isn't actually a lot of um, options on the Google Play Store, well, there is a lot of options on the Google Play Store. However, they're not landscape and Chromebook uh, supported. So what that means is it will, it will look more like a mobile uh, application on your screen whereas KindMaster has full width landscape support so um, you, you can you can directly create and edit videos from here uh, and it works really really well and it's it's got Chromebook support and it works um, really well so whilst there isn't a lot of landscape uh, support uh, the one application that does support at KindMaster works really really well so um, uh, so there's definitely something you can use uh, there on the Android App Store. Um, moving on to uh, photo editing, um, uh, you can actually edit photos using Lightroom. So Lightroom supports Chrome OS, and as you can see here, I've got an image open, and it's it's got uh, lots of different uh, options that you can use. And Lightroom, you know, works great with uh, image editing. So for more uh, in-depth image ed editing, I personally use Lightroom. However, I can also use, uh, or I do actually use Google Photos. Uh, so all of my photos are backed up onto Google Photos and you do have editing options in there as well. However, they're, they're more basic, so they're, they're just for quick edits at the moment. Uh, whereas Lightroom is uh, that kind of a bit more in-depth editing and um, changes that you want to make to your uh, images. 
Uh, and finally uh, is uh, code. Uh, so if you want to code on your Chromebook. Now for this particular section, I will actually direct you to one of my other videos where I talk about in more detail about code editing on a Chromebook. And in that video, I'll go through a lot of different code editors and how you can use them for coding on a Chromebook. However, um, I will just specify that you can actually get something like uh, Android Studios uh, using Linux or onto your Chromebook and it's got um, great uh, support for Chromebooks and you can actually create Android applications directly onto the Chromebook and test them on the Chromebook itself. Uh, and they debug them that way. So if you're a mobile or web developer, I actually thoroughly recommend buying a Chromebook just because it has that direct connection into uh, Android so you can develop really easily for Android on a, Chrome, uh, on a Chromebook. And you can install um, things like um, Atom and Visual Studio Code, which you can use onto your Chromebook uh, directly for uh, other uh, coding needs that you might have and you know they, they work offline and they work uh, really really well um, so yeah that's um, that's kind of all of the main bits of software that I wanted to cover for this video if you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe to see more uh, and support the channel and I'll see you in the next video thank you very much bye bye